What's up, crypto crowd? Welcome back to DeFi Diaries for our second episode. My name is Vishakha Thakur, your host for today, and I am super excited to introduce our special guest, Mr. Amit Chandra. With over 18 years of experience in the IT industry, he has journeyed from technical developer to technology consultant, carving a distinguished path in the blockchain sector over the past eight years. His work spans across continents, including the US, Europe, Japan, and India, where he has significantly contributed to both private enterprises and government sectors. He is currently leading pioneering blockchain projects for government entities and focusing on e-governance solutions. So let's welcome him to the podcast. Hi, Mr. Amit. How are you doing? I'm good. First of all, good morning and thanks, Visaka, for inviting me. It's uh, I'm going to add va- I hope I can. I'm going to add a value to this podcast. Of course, sir. It's a pleasure to have you too. And uh, I'm sure you will bring a wealth of expertise and insights to our discussion. So let's start with your journey into the blockchain industry. How has your journey been so far? So uh, it's so far it has been good, but uh, the journey started few years back in 2019 when I came to know about uh, this fascinating blockchain technology and got to know the potential of it that it provide transparency, immutability, and it make the system efficient. So looking into the potential, looking into that how the data has been secured by this particular technology, it fascinated me. And I tried, uh, I've gone through the workshops, trainings, certification I did, and gradually, slowly, I worked for multiple organizations, and now I'm working for the public sector. Wow, that's great. So what inspired you to pursue a career in blockchain technology and government projects? Yeah. So first of all, I will talk about uh, the blockchain technology, why it fascinated me. So if you look into uh, the features of blockchain technology, it says that it provides transparency, immutability, real-time exposure to all the stakeholders, and it is quite difficult to tamper the data because of the encryption and cryptographic model. Exactly. So it itself says the strong technology, it's a strong technology. And uh, the thing is that uh, when we talk about the public sector or the government sector, mm-hmm. government sector especially focus on the citizen services and making the system more efficient. Uh, being an 18 years of experience in the IT industry and working for a couple of years in the blockchain technology and looking into the data exposure which the government sector has and the vision of government working for the betterment of the citizens. So I thought to contribute and we, and if I can add small value for the betterment of the citizens, then that will be great. So these are the fascinating things which comes to my mind and I joined mm-hmm. uh, to work with the government for the blockchain uh, technology. Well, that's incredible. So talking specifically about your current role, can you describe your current role as a solution architect and project manager? And what does a typical day looks like for you in this position? So as I, as I will first uh, talk to you about uh, the project manager. So when I start my day as a project manager, uh, I need to look into the project progress. I had a meeting with my team looking into each and every activities, their progress, and if there are any kind of road blocker, then I need to connect with my client, giving them the status, any kind of uh, road blocker if we are facing, we have to discuss with the client. The important part is that as we are working for the government, so there are different department whom we need to connect with, what we call in blockchain as a stakeholders. So we connect with the different stakeholder, try to understand their problem statement, looking into their problem statement, giving them workshops so that uh, they will be able to understand the potential of uh, this technology. And based on that, I have to distribute the work. When we talk about the solution architect part, that as a part of solution architect, the important part is the designing of the entire infrastructure and making it secure. Security is the most priority part in the government sector, along with that microservices, things we need to take care of that. So in that way, the entire, uh, my role as a project manager and solution architect uh, take place in my day-to-day life. 
Okay, that's quite interesting. So, uh, since you shared the details of your current role and responsibilities, let's talk about the government projects you are currently associated with. So, which projects have you worked on involving blockchain technology? So, there are there, there are few departments uh, which are very important when we talk about uh, the government sector. Mm -hmm. One of one of the most important department is the land department, the property okay. property department. Because in the case of land registration, land mutation, so these are the very important areas where government is looking into and want to secure these particular uh, sections because there are a lot of things happened and there's, there is a lack of transparency in this uh, department. The other part is the agricultural department. Agriculture department is very important because it is for the farmer and uh, they they are the base of the country so government always think in their direction that how we can efficiently manage the agriculture department which could be benefit for the farmer the citizens and everyone the next part is the healthcare so as you know that uh, how healthcare is important and how the patient data is so much critical nowadays and government is looking into uh, uh, securing this uh, patient data and making sure that this data could be available to other hospitals in their network. Uh, so these are the three or four departments. Uh, if I talk about uh, finance sector, uh, that is also very important of the disbursement of the schemes, how the uh, amount is being distributed to the citizens along with uh, we are more exploring on a couple of more departments, that is the police department. Uh, uh, we are focusing on, on wow. securing the forensic uh, documents. So, there are a lot of, there are so many departments, uh, but these are the main department where uh, currently my team along with me is focusing on. That's incredible. Uh, you're currently focusing on healthcare department, financial yeah. management, then, uh, you know, agricultural sector, land department. That's quite interesting. So I think uh, all the listeners will agree with me that we often face certain challenges in life, such as extra workload or if, you know, it's sometimes difficult to maintain a work-life balance. So what are some of the unique challenges you face when working on government blockchain projects and, uh, you know, compared to private sector projects? Okay, so see, if I talk about the vision, the government department has a greater vision. They want to do something for the citizens' benefit. Okay, they want to make sure that whether in how in what are the ways, what are the emerging technology which could be implemented in the department and that could be benefit for the citizens. So they are focused on that part. Whether it is blockchain, whether it is AI, whether it is chatbot, or whether it is other kind of technologies. So if I talk about uh, the challenges which I face interacting with the government department, mm -hmm. first of all, government department are clear about their vision. The only thing is that they are not that much aware of uh, this technology and how this technology will be benefited to the department. Okay. So to overcome these kind of difficulties, what we do is that we conduct regular type of workshops, trying to interact with them, try to explain them about the uh, benefit of blockchain technology in with the use case of their department only. Suppose, for example, if I'm connecting with the uh, land and registration department, then I will I will create a use case on land and registration department, PPT kind of thing. And I go to them, I give them a workshop so that they will align with their problem statement with the solution of blockchain. And then from there only, the solutions comes from the department and we portray that one, we design that one and create a particular project to develop in their respective departments. That's wonderful. And I think uh, governments across the globe are, you know, exploring or embracing blockchain technology, yes, including yes. AI technology and, you know, several other Web3 technologies as well. Yes, yes. So as you spoke about the challenges, uh, do you often face technical challenges in your projects? And if yes, how do you overcome them? So see, if I talk about uh, the technical challenges, yes, obviously it's a new technology. There are a lot of things going on. So uh, sometimes the technical team face some problem, but they do a do lot of hard work to overcome from that, okay, and they, they resolve that one. So technical uh, challenges are something that uh, are always present if you, are, if you are working on a technical aspect or if you are working on a technology. So this is only about uh, the effort what you give in resolving the technical challenges. Few of the technical challenges comes in terms of the security and 
and uh, increasing the scale scalability of uh, the particular infrastructure. So for that, uh, the, we use microservices and uh, SHA 5.2 kind of encryption model we are using. 256 is currently going on, so we are using for that multi-level authentication purpose, OTP verification we are including in our uh, applications to overcome this kind of uh, challenges. All right. So in the beginning, you mentioned about a stakeholder management associated with one of your current roles. So how do you manage expectations and communication with various stakeholders, including government officials and end users? And it'll be great if you can share a story where stakeholder management was, you know, particularly challenging and how you handled it. Yeah. So see, uh, this particular challenge will only uh, be resolved with an effective communication. Okay. And effective communication, when I talk about an effective communication, what I want to say is to have a meeting with the client. Okay. Try to understand the problem. Don't use any kind of technical words which they are not aware of. Try to make them understand with their language only. Okay. okay. When I go to any department, when I visit any department, I try to understand those departments. Okay. I will give an example that uh, sure. when I came, when when I first came to the government organization, I thought that uh, everyone is aware of the technology and I visited the department. I explained them that this particular state is doing this one. We can do this one. And I came to know that that, that state has already did something on that. Wow. Okay. So we never, we, this is a very, uh, this is a very basic think to know that if we are suggesting anything to a particular state, then we have to do our homework. We have yes. to try to understand. Yeah. So we have to try to understand that what's going on in the department, what type of implementation has already been done in that particular department. And then only understanding the problem statement, understanding their, uh, their existing infrastructure, we have to suggest them in a layman language, not in a technical jargon, because it will be very difficult for them to understand because if, if someone comes to me and explain me something of a technology which I am not aware of and they use the technical jargons, then it will be difficult for me also to understand. Okay. True. So so effective communication is only one important point over here where you can clearly make your point understandable to the other stakeholders. Okay. And that could only be done with kind of PPT, kind of PowerPoint presentation or any kind of documentation regular meetings, training, workshops. So these are the things we have to do.